Hello everyone, we are back with another MuleSoft beginner friendly video and in this video we will be showing you guys how you can connect a database in MuleSoft. We will be covering the download and installation part of a database as well. So please make sure to watch the video until the end so that you don't miss out on any tips and tricks. We will be also covering how you can query a database in MuleSoft. So before we start our video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any new notifications and videos from us. Let's get started. So before we jump into the demo on how you can connect and retrieve records from a database, it is very essential to understand what is database and what are the needs to use a database. So a database is nothing but an organized collection of data stored and accessed electronically. You can host your database on a local machine or on cloud as well. Databases are used to store and manage large amount of structured and unstructured data. You can store million records if you like in a database. Some of the popular databases are MongoDB, MySQL, etc. So this is going to be a quick video. We will be showing you how to use a database. So for this demo, uh, we'll be covering the following topics. We will be downloading and then installing MySQL database uh, on my local machine. And then we will be also downloading MySQL Workbench. It's basically a UI to uh, see the database tables and retrieve records. Then we will be creating a few records in the database table. And last but not least, we'll be uh, using AnyPoint Studio to connect to that database and also retrieve few records uh, in the database from MuleSoft. So without further ado, let's jump into the demo. So the very first step for this demo is to download the MySQL server in your local instance. So in order to do that, what you need to do, you just need to open your Chrome or any other browser and just say download MySQL. Click on the first link and then go to MySQL Community Downloads and then click on MySQL Community Server. So it will automatically detect your uh, system and you can simply, for me, it's a Mac, so I just need to download this DMG archive file. For this you can say no thanks, just start my download and uh, your download will begin. So while this is downloading, you also need to download MySQL Workbench which is nothing but UI for you to see uh, your databases and tables you create in your MySQL server. So I'll start an alternate download. Simply say or simply type MySQL or download MySQL Workbench and click on the first link you get and then you click on download here. So once the download is completed, you need to click on the .exe or .dmg file and just open this package. Say allow. Click continue. If you want to read the software license, you can do so. I'll just click on continue. I agree. It will ask you to uh, select the uh, destination. I'll just go with the default. Then it will ask you to uh, check the installation type. Here I'll not click on install because I have already downloaded the uh, MySQL server. After you click on the install, it will install the MySQL server in your machine and in the configuration it will ask you to set up a password for your root user. Make sure the password you set up, you keep it somewhere because we will be needing that password when we open our MySQL workbench. So now I'll just click on cancel here because I have already downloaded it as I mentioned before. And uh, similarly, you need to download your MySQL Workbench. So after you're done with MySQL Server download and MySQL Workbench download, just search for MySQL Workbench and you will get something like this. So as you can see, there is a local instance server already created for you. Just click on it and here you need to type in the uh, root user password that you did set up when you were basically doing the installation for MySQL server. So I'll just put in the password. Okay, continue anyway. And here you can see the schemas. What I have done, I have created a database called test and in test, I have created a table called test table. 
So to create a database, you simply need to right click here and select create schema. It will ask you to type the schema name. So here what I'll be doing, I'll be creating a new database for you and the name would be test DB and click on apply and it will create the schema test DB. I'll click on close and now in test db as you can see there is no table right so i'll click on the query path here and what i'll do i'll insert uh, columns and some uh, records in the test db table that i will create so the command would be create table and the name would be let's say persons and in here I will set three uh, columns ID and it, it will be a, an integer first name it will be character 255 length and last name it will be character again with 255 length so after that I'll simply execute this query and now if I do a refresh you should be seeing a table here so since my default was test DB it created a table here but if you want to make sure that you create a table in your schema you need to define the schema as well so here if I do test DB dot persons I think now it will create a, a table in test DB schema so now if I close this and if I do refresh all now as you can see in the test DB schema you have a table called persons and in persons you have three columns ID first name last name So after that, uh, we will be just uh, adding some dummy data in this uh, table so that we can retrieve something from this table when we call it from uh, MuSoft. So for that, you need to write insert into command. So here I will say insert into the table name is test db person and uh, here I'll just remove because I've already declared the data type for the fields first name last name and uh, now this is good and I will type in the values values would be one comma should sorry comma between two mules so I'll go ahead and now try to click on execute and I'm missing a comma here now I'll click on execute and it says error code it says unknown now column because I have defined the type uh, character so I need to put single quotes in here and now if I try to execute it it says one row affected and now if I refresh all again and uh, and now if I just remove this do select all from um, test db dot persons and try to execute it I'll get the record ID 1 first name show last name between two mules so this is all sorted so we have created a table in a database and now we would be retrieving this record from MuSoft so let's jump into uh, AnyPoint Studio and see that in action now I'm in my AnyPoint Studio uh, this is my AnyPoint workspace so I will be reusing the last flow that I have built for MUnit. If you haven't checked out that video, I'll be leaving a link in the description below. Uh, do check it out.
So here what I have done is I have created a simple uh, listener, HTTP listener and in the configuration you will see it's it's nothing fancy simply uh, I have given a port and uh, the base path is SQL and uh, the uh, path is query. So here I have created a set variable and uh, I am retrieving the ID from the uh, query parameters that I have presented and uh, this is the select uh, DB uh, configuration. So in the database config I have added MySQL JDBC driver. So the details here I have given uh, from the database that I have created and the database will be now test DB. So I can click on test connection. The text connection was successful. So one more thing I wanted to add, uh, by default you don't have the MySQL uh, JDBC driver uh, library. So what you need to do, you need to uh, modify or add dependency here. So then it will ask you what kind of a dependency you would like to add and you just need to select MySQL JDBC driver and it will add that to your POM XML. So the connection is set and uh, in the select uh, database connector, the SQL query I have given is select everything from uh, test database dot persons table where the ID is actually coming from the variable uh, var's ID. So this is how you uh, dynamically uh, add details in your uh, query. You just need to uh, do colon and then uh, whatever text you define here should be inside your input parameters. So I'll add a debug point. After this nothing fancy, simply uh, changing the output in JSON and then logging it. So now I'll try to debug this project. I'll click on save and it will debug it. And on the other hand, I have opened my postman to uh, basically send a request. In the method I have selected get and uh, this is the URL for my uh, flow. And the ID here, I am giving one. So it has been deployed now and I'll go ahead and send a request. It will stop here because I have a, a breakpoint here and I will do step into. So in the payload, after our select connector, you can see it did retrieve the uh, record from that particular table. And it's now gonna simply transform the data into JSON format and uh, simply gonna log it and in our request we will be getting the uh, first name id and last name so this is how you can create a table in any database and uh, you can use musoc to retrieve your uh, desired records by dynamically uh, changing the uh, select query so i hope you guys liked this video uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, if you have any feedback uh, please post it in the comment section down below uh, and we will see you in the next one. Thank you.